Okay, so we're looking at this problem which involves the bicycle and the trailer um, going down a 10 degree incline and, uh, and the acceleration is given as uh, negative 4 meters per second squared. And I put that as negative because I'm setting up a coordinate system where the coordinate system is tilted and vertical axis is y and down the incline is the positive x axis. Um, and the reason I'm putting it in a tilted coordinate system is I know that I want the, one of the coordinate directions to be along um, the direction of the acceleration. I want to align the, one of my coordinate directions with the acceleration vector. Okay, so the next step is to um, look at all this information I've been given and think about uh, how, how am I going to go about solving this problem. So, um, so one thing to notice right away is that I'd like to find out about this, uh, this interaction force here of the bicycle and the trailer where the two are connected. I'd like to find out how big that force is and, how, and whether it's a pulling force or a uh, pushing force. Um, but I've got a lot of unknowns. I, I don't know the frictional forces, and I don't know these interactive forces. Okay? So given that I've got a bunch of unknowns, um, I, I have to think about how do I want to analyze the system so that, uh, so that I can, so that I can uh, make progress. Um, and if you look at this situation, um, I could draw a free body diagram for the trailer, or I could draw a free body diagram for the bike. But in either of those cases, I'm going to have two sets of unknowns. I'm going to have an unknown interaction force here, and I'm going to have unknown frictional forces. So uh, instead, I'm going to take the other option, which is to look at the entire system of the bicycle and the trailer together as a single system, okay? And if I do it that way, this is my system, then the interaction forces here, the bison and the trailer, are internal to the system. So they don't present external forces that I have to take into account on my free body diagram. And then the only unknown forces there will be the frictional forces. And I know that all those are equal, so if I can find the total frictional force, I can just divide it up into three parts for each of the three wheels and find the friction on each wheel. Okay. So that's the, that's the approach I'm going to take. Um, and if, if, I, if I want to apply um, the, uh, or look at the forces on the whole system, um, I can go ahead and draw a free body diagram for that whole system. So I do that. Okay. For the system, okay. I get a gravitational force on the system by the Earth, okay. and I get a. I put. I'm also going to add in the, the angle of the incline just for reference. You know what angle that is. Okay, and then I can also draw. And I know there's going to be a normal force. Okay, so that's the normal force um, on the system by the road. And um, and notice I should I should add I haven't drawn the bicyclists themselves because I just didn't want to draw the bicyclists, but they would also be part of this 90 kilogram part of the system. Um, okay, so so then I have uh, one final force on that system, and that's the total friction force. So I'm going to draw that one in as well. Okay. And here is the force. Of, and since the bicycle's not sliding, um, since the wheels aren't slipping along the pavement, that's going to be a force of static friction um, on the system by the road. Okay, so those are my, my uh, forces on the system. And then I also know something about the net force because I know the acceleration. So I can say that for the system, the net force 
on this system is equal to the mass times the acceleration, I should say, it's the mass of the system here times the acceleration. Okay. And so since Since the total mass of the system of the trailer, the bicycle, and the rider is 130 kilograms, and the acceleration is minus 4 meters per second squared, I get a net force on the system of minus 520 um, newtons. And that net force on the system, uh, I can just remind myself that that is going to be Direct. It's going to be negative because it's going to be in the negative x direction. Okay, so now I've got to figure out how big the other forces are, and I can start by um, by noticing that uh, that the gravitational force can be broken up into two pieces. The perpendicular component and a parallel component. And in this situation, I know that the parallel, the perpendicular component is just going to be the right amount um, to balance the normal force, or actually really the normal force will be just big enough to balance this part of the gravitational force because um, the, the object isn't accelerating in the y direction, and okay? the system isn't. So the only thing I really have to worry about are the forces in the x direction. And so I just have to take into account the um, here the, the x component of the gravitational force, um, and so that's going to be the uh, force gravitational uh, in on the system in the x direction, and it's going to be equal to it's in the positive x direction, and it's equal to um, since this is 10 degrees and this is also 10 degrees, we can do the trigonometry to convince ourselves that this is going to be the mass of the system times g times uh, the cos times the sine because it's the opposite here of 10 degrees. So sine. All right, so I've got all my all my forces here quantified, and I want to figure out how big this frictional force is. Okay, and so to do that, I can just say that the net force on the system here, which is my minus 520 newtons, is going to be equal to the combination of the forces in the x direction. So the, that's going to be equal to the positive gravitational force minus the size of the frictional force. So it's going to be M system G sine 10 degrees okay, minus the total force of static friction on the system uh, by the road. Okay. So now I can calculate this. I, and I just want to find what this is, and if I work through the details, I get that the total force of static friction on the system by the road is equal to, I, and I work this out to get 746 newtons. Okay. And that also means that the size of the frictional force on each of the three wheels, since the problem tells me that those frictional forces are equal on each of the wheels, um, would be just one third of this. So on each wheel, let's say each tire has. Um, 
on the wheel by the road equal to um, 249. So that's sort of the first part of the solution. And now what this does is it I've used analysis of the system without worrying about the internal force at all to figure out the size of the static frictional forces on each of the wheels. Now that I've got that, I can then go look at the free body diagram for either the bicycle or the trailer, and I can use that to figure out how big these interaction forces are. Now that I know the frictional force from analyzing the whole, the whole system. So that's the next step. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram for the trailer. Um, if I look at the trailer, okay, it's going to also be on an incline. Here's the trailer. And it just helps me to draw another picture. Okay. And I can make a note of the fact that it's not that the bicycle is not is no longer present, it's just that I'm now considering a system or an object which is just the trailer alone. Okay, and looking at all the interaction with that with that object. So let's go ahead and do that. So I draw the free body diagram. Notice it's the since the system is uh, accelerating at 4 meters per second squared, everything in it is also. So this has an acceleration again of minus 4 meters per second squared. Okay, And we're using the same coordinate system. And I can actually go even further. I know that the net force on the trailer is equal to the trailer's mass of 40 kilograms times this acceleration. So again, it's negative, meaning it's opposite um, the motion or in the, in the negative x direction, and um, 160. Okay, so let's draw the free body diagram. And the free body diagram looks remarkably similar, right? We've got a gravitational force um, on the trailer by the Earth. And we know that that gravitational force, we're going to want to break it up into a perpendicular and parallel components. Okay. And then we're also going to have a normal force on the trailer by the earth, I'm sorry, by the road. Okay. And we're going to have a friction force, which we just found out. It's a static friction because the wheels aren't sliding, and that's on the trailer um, by the road. And then finally, we're going to add a new force that wasn't over here because in this case the trailer is connected to the bicycle. And so the bicycle can put an interaction force on the trailer. We'll call it since we think it's going to be um, either a push or a pull. Let's, we have to decide or make an assumption about whether it's, a, it's going to be a push or a pull. And that's hard to see right off. I suspect that because the frictional forces are equal, but the trailer is less than half the mass of the bicycle, um, I think that it's actually going to be a pulling force. Okay, and you can sort of think about why that might be the case. But uh, in any case, we can assume one, and then if we end up finding that that force comes out to be the opposite direction we expect, then we can then it could be a, we realize it's the opposite pushing force. So let's assume it's going to be a pulling force, okay? And we'll call that a tension force. It's going to be down the incline, okay? Maybe it's not going to be that big because we think that 
might not be too much, we don't want too much tension between the bicycle and the trailer. Um, so it's tension force and it's on the trailer and it's kind of by the bicycle. So we'd like to find this and we know all of these other forces now. So um, again, there's no motion perpendicular to incline, so we don't have to worry about that, those forces. So we can just again take this, the force gravitational on the trailer in the x direction. And that's going to be just like before, the mass, but this time it's the mass of the trailer, times g times the sine 10 degrees. Okay. So now if I, if I want to analyze the net force, or set forces equal to the net force, I can just take all the forces in the horizontal direction. So um, we know that the net force is equal to, uh, if we rewrite it, it's the tension force uh, on the trailer by the bicycle. Okay. Um, the magnitude of the tension force, right? um, and it's minus the, um, actually first let's say it's the tension force plus the gravity, plus the x from the gravitational, so it's plus um, mtg sine 10 degrees, okay? this one plus this one, and then subtracting off the, uh, the frictional force on one of the wheels minus the force of static friction okay, on the trailer by rope. All those together equal minus 160 newtons. And now I can just um, add in what these various quantities are. So this one is going to, this is what I'm looking for, the tension force on the trailer by the bicycle. Okay. Um, let's solve for it. So we get it's equal to the force of static friction on the trailer by the road. Okay. Um, minus Now putting the numbers, we get this is 249, so that's the, what we found from the first half of the problem. And then this one is going to be um, This, uh, this x component of the gravitational force on the trailer comes out to be uh, 69 newtons. Okay. And then minus 160 newtons. And that's all the tension on the trailer by bicycle. And so working that through, I get 249 minus 69 is 180, and then minus 160, I get a tension there of 20 newtons. So it looks like, based on this, we've done a pretty good job of designing this uh, braking system because we still have a tension force between the trailer and the bicycle, which will tend to uh, make the system more stable while we're braking. But at the same time, we're getting a pretty small tension force. So there's not a huge stress on that, on that junction there. Um, so yeah, if we, if we had, in this case, gotten a, a uh, negative value for this tension force, then we would realize that the tension actually wasn't a tension force at all. It was really a pushing force or a normal pushing of the bicycle holding back the trailer. Okay.